Researchers have recently found a way to use water to make less flammable and better lithium-ion batteries. Is this legit? Well, we'll find out. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. You're watching The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Awesome to have you here today. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel over the last couple of weeks. I think there's been about 20,000 of you. Awesome to see you all. And make sure you check out the 670, 680 videos we've created over the last six months on the channel. There's a lot of good content there that's worth checking out that's going to help you understand what's really going on in the electric car industry. Now, what's going on now with battery technology is, well, every single day of the week, there's new battery technology coming out. And it's very hard to be selective on what I report on because honestly, I'll be able to bombard you with all the new tech that's going on. There's a lot going on in the industry, but this story is worth talking about. Now, a research team has found using water as an electrolytic solution in a lithium ion battery can make it less prone to catch fire or to explode. Now, Jack Quick reports for Car Expert that a team of scientists have developed, have developed a prototype lithium ion battery pack that uses water as an electrolytic solution rather than a flammable organic solvent. Sounds good to me. By using water as an aqueous electrolytic solution, it's hoped the lithium ion battery pack will be less prone to fires or explosions than typical lithium ion batteries. Obviously, water is a lot cheaper than any electrolyte solution as well. So this could potentially also reduce the cost. Now, this study opens a way to, to develop high energy, durable and safe batteries on the basis of metastable and nano sized oxides with aqueous electrolyte solutions states the research articles abstract as published by proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, or PNAS for short. Much easier to say PNAS, isn't it? Now, the researchers from Yokohama National University and other organizations have found using an aqueous electrolytic solution can possess several beneficial characteristics, such as higher ionic conductivity, environmental benignancy, and high safety as well. Honestly, all around, it sounds like a really good solution so far. So is there any cons to it? Well, yeah, there is, unfortunately. Although this might sound idyllic, this aqueous electrolytic solution can only be used in lower voltage conditions, and it yields slightly lower performance. This is what I expected, lower performance. But sometimes you'll find that lower performance isn't really such a bad trade-off as is the case with lithium ion phosphate batteries. The reason for this is because the water breaks down when a high voltage is applied to the battery. So as reported by the Japanese publication, the Asohi Shimbun, the researchers found that using an oxide for the negative electrode can achieve performance levels required for practical use. So they found a solution to the challenges of the water breaking down. They say, after 2,000 charge cycles, they discovered that the battery capacity dropped to only 73%. That's a lot of cycles. And 73% at 2,000 cycles is really a very low level of battery degradation for that many cycles. Another notable drawback, though, is the weight versus the energy density is around half the level of a conventional lithium-ion battery pack, which would mean it'd have to be larger to produce the same capacity. So this makes me think maybe this solution would work really well for energy storage products. Now, the researchers are hoping to bring this battery to market within three years for use in stationary energy storage systems, ESSs, and short distance electric vehicles. Obviously, this solution, in my view, is actually really good because it could bring down the cost of energy storage and bring down the cost for vehicles, shorter range electric vehicles as well. Now, as electric vehicle demand grows, research teams around the world have been testing out different battery chemistries and additives constantly, all the time. There's so much work going into this. There's billions of dollars going into this research right now. A research team from Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden, explored a sodium ion battery technology that's said to be more environmentally friendly and cheaper to produce than today's lithium ion batteries. Now, I made a video I think it was about six months ago about sodium ion batteries being made by CATL, the world's, the world's largest battery company. And unlike most of the videos you'll find on YouTube talking about amazing new battery technology, it's legit. It's 100% legitimate because CATL has already signed off on it. They're already building them. 
they're basically in the situation where they are about to sell the sell the end product to users right now. So it's not some kind of mystical, far off, hopeful, wishful dream of great battery technology, but CATL's sodium ion battery technology will reportedly reduce the price for batteries massively, potentially by more than 30%. Now check out the video I made about those sodium ion batteries. I'll put a link in the description below. Unlike the lithium ion battery with the aqueous electrolytic solution, the sodium ion battery technology is expected to have the same energy density as lithium ion EV batteries, right? Huge difference here. Now, CATL obviously has been researching the viability of sodium ion batteries and expects production to commence at their factory that is currently being built in 2023. Additionally, a research team from Monash University here in Australia, assisted by the CSIRO, found a glucose-based additive could stabilize lithium sulfur batteries. I made a video about how sugar can stabilize lithium ion batteries. I'll put a link in the description below to that video as well. Now, this battery chemistry is said to be able to store two to five times more energy than lithium ion batteries, which is insane, two to five times more. Imagine the energy density. You could potentially have a, a 70 kilowatt hour pack that could give you more than a thousand kilometers of range. So this is extremely promising technology. It's a bit further off though, a bit further off than where we're at with sodium ion batteries right now. Now, the team says that this could lead to vehicles like electric buses and trucks traveling from Melbourne to Sydney, a route of about 900 kilometers without recharging at all. And that is a game changer. But really, it's probably not actually needed because unless we have autonomous driving trucks, then truck drivers are forced to stop between Melbourne and Sydney anyway. So it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if they have to plug in their trucks. So in that case, maybe it doesn't matter so much. But once we have autonomous driving vehicles, you can imagine the incredible efficiency difference. No driver needed, no stopping for battery charging needed, huge distances covered. It's going to be an incredible decade ahead of us. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.